All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry, this is the last time I'll be interrupting you. And I'll get straight to the point. We're, we're back here at the point of the sky position. So we're trying to figure out where they wanted to look in the sky or for us to find this. So clearly, they say significantly more simulation is critical for a better assessment of the path of Planet 9 across the sky. So they look at the range of 5 to 20 Earth masses, and they transfer this mass into an expected brightness requires assumptions of both radius and albedo neither of which is constrained by any of our obs observations. So we can say for the masses between 5 to 15 with 10% atmospheric mass fraction, the radius of blah, 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 we use our normal relationship with the range extending to 20 Earth masses, which is a value of 0.75 primarily scattering in the atmosphere. We're saying there's just kind of like a window how much light's let in, this and that. So it's how much light's being reflected and how, how much we could see it. So we now use our estimated orbital parameters. We predict the orbital path of planet nine across the sky. We carry out a simple Monte Carlo analysis, selecting uniformly across all the parameter ranges. Figure 10 shows the sky location, heliocentric distance, magnitude, and sky motion at the opposite opposition for our sweet and predicted orbits. So we're trying to find... Uh, Diagram 10 here. So, let me see. Using all the constraints in the orbits, we can predict the location, distance, brightness, and speed throughout its orbit within 10 degrees of the ecliptic plane are outlined in red. The ecliptic plane is shown in blue. The colored positions show regions where planet nine would have been or should be detected by previous or ongoing surveys. So where's that? The colored portions. Light blue shows CRTS reanalysis. Yellow shows dark energy survey limits and coverage. Dark blue shows pan stars transient analysis limits. Green shows pan stars moving objects analysis. Red shows pan stars expected limits. Orange shows the region exclusively ruled out of lack of observed perturbation of Saturn. And the black region shows where Planet 9 could not have been or will not be detected in previous or currently planned surveys. So what they're saying is here's your speed, all right, your right ascension, and here's your magnitude. So what, what they're saying is They're giving you coordinates here that it's a probable coordinate to, you could say. And I would say, if you look at it, the declination is probably negative, as I said. If you look at the nice group of mass colors here, this would be above the ecliptic, so I, I guarantee we'd see it. Okay, We'd already see it all the time, and it wouldn't be a mystery. This is the distance, so good good idea that it's pretty close to Earth, and there's no chance that it's out there, is what they're saying. And the magnitude in which the brightness is measured, that's what the magnitude they're talking about, okay? Magnitude in astronomy is the brightness of a planet. So, yeah. Looks to be that only certain scans could see it in certain wavelengths and distances, and the brightness. I know anything below a certain number on here is completely invisible to the human eye. <sighs> they say they can't, they do blink tests of one arc second per hour and since there's a lot of stuff out there and it's really far, it's hard to see. But they, a few surveys to a potentially detected planet nine at some point in its orbit, all right? So, first one they say is wise, okay? That's the one I showed you, all right? I showed you that it was, I thought, in the Pisces symbol, and I could actually here. Let me see, wise scan, one they're talking about. Let me see if I can pull this up for you real quick. Or actually, here, instead of doing all this, I'll close out solar system scope say goodbye to the universe guys blam exit this out I go back minimize this 
and I have to get uh, my worldwide telescope here. I'm going to go ahead and share it this way with you. Doth Revan. All right, so sorry guys, I'm new with all this. Uh, not much of into really editing because we already did this thing at least two or three times and spent hours trying to retrieve the files, send them over, and it's just it's been a pain in the ass. So I apologize for any inconvenience of you having to watch me do this stuff, and I'm probably not going to edit it out. Just saying that now. <laughs> All right, so I'll give this a second to load up. I got a lot of things going on, so just takes a moment. All right, we want to go to all sky surveys. We want to go to more surveys. Good infrared. Oh wait, wait. We know we're getting some good stuff. Can't remember which one was was in. That's the IRS. Let me think. Let me think. <sighs> Sorry. It should be just on this one. So, yeah, here it is. I'm sorry. I was overlooking it. My Skype guy was over there before I moved it. I got it right. There it is. Right. Constellation Pisces. Zoom in. See, this is the plane of the ecliptic here. This thing is obviously going across that. And, uh, yeah, so anything above to the north of this line would be North America's view. Okay. Anything below that would be South America's view. And that doesn't change, so... The trolls that want to tell me, you know, things like that, and they can't see it, they can't see that. Well, explain that, all right? That's that's a planet. It's not traveling the way it should be, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, we can go back over some of the old IRS data if you want. I mean, go and see this, this wavelength of energy that you see here. That's the ecliptic plane. That's, that's their galactic core, this white white energy right here. That's your galactic core of the galaxy. Okay, so that's the Milky Way, the plane of ecliptic of the Milky Way galaxy that we're inside of. And when they're doing this, they're showing us basically when you go to something like Google Earth and you see, let me bring this up for you real quick. Here, wait, wait, just type in. Google. Go there, and then we'll get get up Google Sky. I have this downloaded as well. I just don't want to open a bunch of programs if I could just open up Google Sky on the, the app to show you the demonstration I want to show you. So if we go, I think infrared scan. It doesn't even matter if it's infrared. You can see it with your naked eye. But you see this bandwidth here. That's the galactic core. This is really a straight line, and we rotate around this and spin around this. This is a straight line inside of the galaxy, just like I showed you with the solar system, the plane of the ecliptic. This energy right here is the energy coming off of planet X, I believe, or our second sun. This bandwidth of energy, you can see it, doesn't follow the path of the ecliptic. And it's there, and it's present in planet X. The only thing they edited out of this whole scan is black in the center of it. So, yeah, think about that. That energy, that galactic core we're traveling through, it takes our sun 26,000 years to go from the top to the bottom back through again. That's what they were talking about, a descending age and an ascending age. There was a point that the Earth to come through this middle point right here, the halfway, and start rising up into higher amounts of energy going into the golden age, golden dawn. That's 2012, uh, 5 a.m. The December 21st, 2012, 
we met the halfway point from our dip and started rising upwards. So into the peak energy, okay? The golden age, that's, that's what they were talking about. That 2600 year cycle of saviors, creators, destroyers, that's, that's all. That was what they were talking about, the four worlds. That's the three worlds that came before. And the books that were, those three books were in the halls of Amente and the, the libraries of Alexandria that the Christians burnt down. We only have the last book of the last world, which is the Bible, the Quran, and the Old Testament. They all tell stories of it, the, the Sumerian tablets. That's, that's the last book, okay, of the fourth world, not the third, second, or first. And these Masonic principles have been around for at least that long. They worship the age of the goat because of this. Because that was their creator, their their savior. <sighs> but more and more of it. Uh, let me go into the. Make sure I'm in the right one. I guess it's this one. Good. Yeah. So after that point in 2000, in, in the Mayan long count, that 2,600 year cycle, it's written in stone. I mean, Mayan long count. Well, just look it up. It's just I'll show you the image. There it is. This thing. So this is what I was talking about. This cycle took 2,600 years, and it was just our sun going up to through, through the galactic core. All right. Look, you go through. Just type in this if you want. It'll give you a nice. Uh, I'm sure right here is a perfect example. This is the procession of the yugas. This is a an ancient religion. You can look at it all. It's it's throughout all kinds of religions and ancient history and ancient knowledge. They knew things that we don't know about the sun descending and ascending and in through the the gates, the passages, ways of you know, the galactic core. Like I said, this universe. The solar system, this galaxy, you know, it's all rotating. So it's our, our galaxy is spinning, solar system spinning. It's just like I showed you earlier. Anyways, as you're coming through, you go down, and then you're going into the Iron Age, like the, the lowest of the age, the Bronze Age, Silver Age, Golden Age. So at this point, you start rising up again, okay? You start rising out of this Iron Age and going into a... a transformation of energy you're going through higher peaks of energy through the galactic core of our galaxy and you're just exposed to way more higher amounts of energy that's all so exactly at 2012 the 21st is the change of this going into an ascending stage of course they're going to make it look like doom right move this So there's the wise scan we were talking about. I just showed you that. One more time. Do the wise. Let me explore. Let me see. There's the ecliptic plane. I'll just follow the plane of the ecliptic. There it is. So spin this bad boy around. There it is. That is. This is south at the top right now, where I can show you real quick. But yeah, tell me that isn't interesting, right? The only other object. And I don't know if these are two predisposed scans, but one is in Pisces. And the other is in Virgo. Is that Comet 67P? Seven virgins? What is it? Who knows? 
seven virgins, huh? Think about that. They're sort of, they're hiding these hints around us. So they're telling you stuff. Okay. Now, remember when I did the IRS again? I just go to this. And then that was the iris scan. Let me go to my RAS. Well, you've already seen it. But I'll go. Okay. So you can make sure you understand it. We went to infrared. Here's the iris. These are all good, good different scans. I'm sure they show you different things when they're close. For some reason, I can't see the IRAS scan. It's only showing me the IRIS scan, which is very odd because I showed you that on Google Scan. But anyways, enough of that. They're talking about the. Catalina, so let's let's go. Um, they're thinking that Planet Nine could be enhanced above its black body level and thus potentially observable at a greater distance. So anything, it's it's hard to pick up Neptune-sized planets with the wide scan, it says, but they can do it once they get a certain distance. Okay. So I think that's what that was going on there. This one was the Catalina Real-Time Transient Survey, CRST. Planet 9 would have been visible to this survey over a substantial portion of its orbit, though it was not detected. That's what they say. So we... And in my theory, I don't believe that necessarily because when you go into different scans, you can look at planets that we know are there and not see them in, at all in those scans. They're invisible. So this is just an unknown science. Dark Energy Survey. Performing the Deep Southern Hemisphere Survey to date, some of the Dark Energy Survey region covers the orbital path of Planet 9. Indeed, one of the seven cluster objects was detected in DAS. Well, so they have the names for these seven objects. And remember how I told you guys that Planet X had seven bodies that orbit it? All right, so they gave a name to one of them. So there, let that information be known. This is most likely one of the objects in Planet X's Nibiru's system. Okay. Ileon, whatever you want to call it, with the other names of the things around it. Harrington, we could name some cool stuff, I'm sure. 